Hello and welcome back to Oracle Mystica. Today we are going to do a career reading and um, my intention with this one is to kind of take a snapshot of different areas of life that have that interact with career and just trying to pull out some common threads um, to kind of help calibrate and um, hone in on maybe like the best sort of direction for what you do in the world, your role. So if you were to look at an astrology chart, all of the earth related houses kind of um, support each other. If, uh, they make sort of what's called a grand trine. If you were to look at the second, sixth and 10th houses in a career or in a, an astrology chart. And even though the 10th house is technically the career chart, if you're not taking the other two earth houses into account, you could end up being somewhat miserable or a little bit lost or just um, not completely fulfilled or not making, um, either not totally fulfilled or not making the money you feel like you should be making. So by bringing in consideration of the second and sixth houses as well. We can kind of give a little bit more purpose and a little bit more love and value to um, direct towards figuring out how all of these should support each other. So I'm going to pull some cards for each, like um, my version in this of like, uh, I'll make a little triangle of like the second house representing uh, what you value and love and can bring good money into the sixth house we'll do over here which will be um, how you're able to systemize and be very you know like um, organized systemize hence able to really be uh, productive and useful and then we'll look also at the tenth which I'll do up here which is going to be sort of like where you're really able to build mastery, credibility, authority. And then trying to see where there might be some common threads through all three of these to um, just help calibrate something, find something that runs through all of them that you can kind of um, zero in on and kind of make the focal point for you in terms of what you do in the world so that um, yeah, so that you pull all of these things in, something you feel useful at, something you can um, be an authority in, and something that is going to, you know, that you love and that's going to make you money. And then after we do that, we'll pull some tarot cards, um, and maybe we'll see if any of my oracle cards call in too, but definitely some tarot cards just to kind of see what's going on right now and um, some thoughts around that. So... We are going to do three piles today. We've got the um, Threads of Fate Oracle with a green calcite, um, Numerology Oracle with pyrite. Oh, wait, sorry. This is the Threads of Fate one. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, this is something about elements. I'll put it, I'll put the decks in the description. So something about elements. So pile one is an elemental deck, pile two is a numerology deck, pile three is threads of fate with kind of archetypal energies. I'm going to be using all of these decks in all of the readings, um, but just to sort of help you um, choose a deck, I thought it'd be fun to separate them out and then place different crystals. So I'll bring these up closer to you. So pile one is this green calcite, pile two with the pyrite, and then the pile three with clear crystal quartz. All right, um, let's take a few deep breaths to kind of center into our higher mind, invite some inspiration in. So take a deep breath in, hold at the top, close your eyes and focus into the space between your brows and then a deep breath out through your nose. One more breath in, hold at the top again, and this time out through the mouth with a big ah, which opens the crown chakra and invites 
um, you know, higher wisdom in. So um, if you need more time with the cards to choose your pile, feel free to pause here and take whatever time you need. Otherwise, we'll jump straight into pile one. Timestamps will be in the descriptions if you want to jump straight to whichever pile you chose. All right, see you in your reading. Hello, pile one. Welcome to your reading. You guys picked the green calcite, Ooh, which I will just uh, we'll put it over in this corner. <laughs> um, okay, based off of the deck you chose and just some information before getting into any of the cards, I'm feeling like this group is a little bit of the movers and shakers of the world. You're very clear, you're very energetic, a little bit more active, um, a little bit more youthful, but you're bringing new things to light and pushing um, pushing the world forward with, with um, fresh thoughts, fresh ideas, fresh um, energy, and um, sometimes that can also mean feeling like a lot of pushback because um, you're trying to change things and not everyone loves change. So that's just like, you know, a general feeling I'm getting is you're kind of the, the younger souls who are exciting and um, bringing in a fresh breath of new air. But, um, you know, that that definitely always meets with a bit of resistance and um, can sometimes also be looked at as a bit naive, but um, but in reality, it's just yeah, it's just sort of the new new wave coming in. <laughs> so um, okay, so let's um, initially kind of look at some energies around um, what it is that you value in terms of. Um, putting yourself to work, being, having a role in the world, like what do you love? What do you value? Hence, what can you earn money for, actually make money for? So if you were to think of the 10th house in astrology, which is career, we're looking kind of at your second house or not specifically your second house, but just at that general kind of, um, energy of just looking at what you value, what you love, hence what you can make money at. The difference between the 10th house is the 10th house knows how to keep money, how to keep legacy and how to have authority. But if you were to look at people who have even the greatest authority, even like the president of the United States doesn't only, you know, they don't, yes, granted there's opportunities around them because of the connections they make to gain some wealth and access to money, but their actual income is not, um, compared to a CEO of some huge company, is really quite low. Um, so just because you have authority, mastery, CEO type status, or a doctorate in something doesn't always mean that you're going to make the bucks. But when we pay attention to the second house, what we value, what we love, hence what we can attract value back with, that's when we can kind of bring that material value back into our lives. Okay, so for this pile, pile one, we have protection and cave with this energy or these cards. I'm going to pull three different oracles and then we'll kind of see what the feeling is. Self-discipline. Um... Security is feeling very already just kind of like a big soul work. All of these have a very Cancerian theme going on for me. Um, really wanting to know, like you really value coming from a place of soulfulness and a place of building strong foundations and um, really caring about the um, valuing, loving, caring, want to, wanting to mold, spend money on things that make you feel 
secure, safe, um, uh, tending to your inner self versus sort of outer world um, expectations, like really paying attention to what you need, self-care. So it's like self-care could be something that you really value being, feeling like you have um, the safety to use your voice, to express yourself, but like, yeah, just like needing um, the proper boundaries and foundations and um, structures to, um, to feel safe to express what's deeply what uh, inside of you. Um, so things around home, family, women, um, imagination, literal security things, cyber security. Um, yeah, all these, these types of things that sort of um, create a protective field around you. There's something there that you really value or that has a value element in it for you. Okay, let's look at kind of um, similar to sixth house energy, like what you feel useful at, what um, sort of like what the world needs that you can meet those needs um, because of the skill you have, because of the way you organize and systemize and your style of producing and efficiency. Fury. <laughs> I feel that with that younger energy. Um, definitely just a lot of frustration with the, the patriarchy kind of thing going on here. Needing to feel sort of wanting to tear down old systems, maybe. Financial discipline. So very... Yeah, uh, a lot of very responsible energy here, which is um, good to see with that initial mover shaker energy I felt. Um, yeah, I think you're feeling the instability of the world right now. And so just like um, whatever age you are, because um, I'm not necessarily talking about someone's specific age, it's just the energy you hold. Um, I think you're you're feeling yeah um, the state of the world right now. You're just like really disappointed in I think, and the way you're seeing the systems feel broken, feel um, exploitative to you. You're really connected to nature, um, really wanting to make systems make productivity that's more holistic, organic, um, and disciplined, sort of. Um, to me, I'm reading this financial discipline as, um, as like uh, thinking ahead, thinking of generations ahead in terms of like, how can we create systems um, like these organic, more natural, more holistic, beautiful, well systems that will, uh, that are an investment not only in my great grandchildren, but in the wealth of the earth type of thing, like the wealth of humanity and earth and this whole biosystem type thing. And um, so it's like a really far, far seeing, productivity and I really feel like you're bringing in more holistic ways to look at systemizing and producing um, in the world that are you know still profitable um, but you're you know like part of you is trying to tear down old things but part of you is introducing new ways new thinking new um, organic thoughts around systems and productivity and yeah uh consumption <laughs> but that's not just um like going back to being 
hunters and gatherers, you do see, like, I do think you have the potential to see how to still make um, the commercial world work um, by still being really good to the future of humanity and the earth. Um, which, I, you know, there's a lot going on here. That soul, this is very um, Mother Earth. That's like a connection I'm getting so far with both of these. This is like this deep connection um, to Mother Earth and its future and our future as her children. Um, I think you care a lot about that. And I think you know this is partially for humanity. Like the Earth will be fine if we're wiped out. And I think you know that. Um, so <laughs> you're really interested in in um, restoring the balance between humanity and earth. Um, so tearing down the way we've done it before and um, trying to be more co-creative in a responsible way with our, our planet. Yeah, earth again, expansion north. North in the Celtic spirit will, which is something I study, um, is related to the earth element and thinking generationally, ancestrally, um, responsibly. So young souls bringing in very, very wise future thinking. Change, change, change. Yeah, you're ready for just like a complete revolution of how we've done things. Um, important real destruction. Fury, destruction, yeah. Um, I feel like you're the person that's like, I would be fine burning everything down the way it is right now and just starting afresh with a whole new way of thinking about systems, of thinking about sustainability, of thinking about um, the value of, of our the connection to our planet and our ancestral future. Um, so it's a pretty strong thread coming through here. So you guys of the piles may be a little bit more clearer than others. Um, not that it's always easy to find your exact role or path into using all of this in career because it is revolutionary energy. So at this stage of things, you could be an activist, you could be someone coming into companies to shake up and consult how they're working. Um, you could put a lot of effort into um, work around developing uh, resource chains uh, that are eco-friendly, of developing resources that are eco-friendly, of developing kind of the, you know, like sustainable and regenerative farming in your communities, kind of that like sh local consumption, global connection type thing, trying to bring consumption and production of what your com community um, produces and buys, trying to find ways to keep it a little bit more local and sustainable. Um, yeah, I mean, those are just some general ideas coming through. Um, I'm sure there's a gazillion other things, and so hopefully there have been some things that have come up for you um, that I haven't said, but that would make sense for the things that we're seeing, you know, feel free to add in your, what pops into your heart and your head as, as I'm talking about this stuff. Okay, so based on this thread we're seeing, I'm gonna pull out from this Wild Unknown Archetype deck, just a few archetypes to see if we can kind of help us hone in on some sort of um, merged archetypes that might show up when you're really um, plugged into all of these things. The stone, again, just really concerned with creating solid foundations 
um, that are well, that are sustainable and holistic. So just like really um, solid people here. The dead end. Yeah, I felt that with destruction and brush fire and protection. It's like, um, I really think that you're here to put a stop to um, ways that corporations and production and consumption and patriarchy, so like the balance of, you know, this could even be around, um, I definitely am feeling this more earth center, but it could also be stuff around how um, women or minorities are treated, but you're just sort of like um, done with anything that's being, there's actually like a really deep connection to the feminine and all of these, like any marginalized thing, not necessarily women, but the feminine energy is like a, a deep protector of that kind of thing and really relates to earth and what's abused and um, yeah you see this so clearly and you're the people that are going to come in and create absolute roadblocks from some of these things going forward um, a huge stop to uh, t to the old systems creating yeah you're really, yeah, interested in tearing some other way down and creating more sacredness. I love seeing this triangle and the stone and the temple, um, solid foundations that are co-created, sustainable, organic, and that are very sacred and well and a little bit more feminine in nature in terms of letting the imaginal in, letting the soul in letting there be more ceremony and prayer and nurturance um, out in the public world in the public sphere to be respected and valued um, so beautiful you guys um, okay i'm gonna roll some dice as well Let's see if we can whittle this even further down <laughs> Uh, the moon, you can't make this up. The moon, this is everything I've been talking about. Um, the soul work, the cave, the north, yeah, nature. Um, it's, there's a connection to our planet, to women, to anything marginalized, to getting to the depth and the soul and the sustainability of things, the making life more sacred, making life yeah and you're wanting to do this in a big way with sagittarius showing up um you're wanting this to be global i mean we are in a global world and that's what i was sort of feeling sort of like this thing of like how do we switch to um you know local consumption global connection like i think you have some vision with this or have the potential to create vision around this and create new ways that will put a stop immediately to the others because there's what's this is seen and expressed what the possibilities are um it's really hard to continue to destroy uh the sacredness of, of what's possible and what what we're just um abusing you know and this eighth house, this is so powerful, and I feel this with the destruction and the fury and the dead end. Um, this is going into, I felt this, like the resources of the world, you know how they're being funneled. And there's a lot of secretness around it with big businesses, like oil, like big resource production. Um, you have the capability to bring in... Um, renewable energies to change um, energy dependence into renewable energies to see where resources are um, being misused and creating huge imbalances and undermining. I feel like you have a lot of vision around the difference between what undermines our world or underwrites our world. And you wanna switch that because everything this kind of more patriarchal system we're in is little by little by little undermining and undermining humanity where more and more people are falling into poverty and fewer and fewer are becoming more and more rich. Um, but this, if you look at it systemically, it's undermining 
our world um, and that's not sustainable and I think you have the potential to see how to underwrite things how to um, understand that the most vulnerable in a society is where we have to look first to understand the health of anything and um, oh I can feel it in my voice I don't get like <laughs> super worked up about things and this I'm just like whatever is channeling through me is just like so passionate and so worked up and it's like you can see you can see how channels of power work how channels of resources work and you have the potential to both stop old ways and introduce new ways um, so whatever it is if it's as small as a community garden in your neighborhood or as big as um, helping to create an energy independence outside of like oil companies or whatever you know i mean whatever it needs to be you know like a, just saying you have this vision or it might be working with women to make women's issues more respected and honored as roles in the world you know it doesn't have to be about resources but there's something about balancing um bringing empowerment to um respect and empowerment to more soulful ways, more soulful things, more soulful people, more soulful resources, all of it, you know? So I'm sure with all the different people watching this, you're all gonna fall in kind of different ways, but you guys are really, yeah, this new wave is beautiful, you new wave people. <laughs> yeah, go for it, yay. Um, thank you guys. <laughs> All right, let's look at a few tarot to just kind of see maybe where you're at right now and help pull out some thoughts to maybe what you need to do to get closer to being on this kind of a path that we pulled, teased out. Um, and I might pull some oracle. We'll see what happens with the tarot first. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to say, I feel like you guys are all um, in some way tiptoeing into this new path. Look at all these page, ace, ace. This is all very, um, you're starting to recognize this, feel the passion of it, the importance of it, and trying to find um, your way into working with it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay. For sure. Um, new values coming in, new ideas coming in to replace the old. You're seeing where things are starting to dissolve, where that undermining that is so um, prevalent and starting to show up so deeply in the world right now, you're seeing where that is and you're just kind of like waiting for it, waiting for it to happen. I feel like you guys are lined up behind the destruction. You kind of have to wait for some of this destruction to happen. But right behind this, so like right now you may feel like you're in a place of limbo, but you have so much alive in you that you feel like you want to contribute um, new ideas, new ways of valuing, introducing values, new big thoughts, ideas, innovations um, that can really bring new kinds of, of hope and change um, and you're feeling the strength within you. And this, all of this beautiful energy is just aligning, assimilating, congealing, coming together. It's a huge force that's about to take place, but you're needing to kind of wait for this falling apart to happen first, but you're lined up right behind it. You're just sort of like waiting for this tower, the old systems to fall because they are falling. And right behind it, you're already there with, you're there, you're ready with the new ideas, it's just like they they can't quite 
get off the ground yet because there, you know, there's still some old structures that are sort of in your way. And, um, but it's, I feel like that's about to happen. So whatever this is individually for you, I'm kind of ta been talking big global scale, but for you personally in your life, you may have a new idea of that community garden of how to give more feminine positions, respect in the world of how to stop big businesses or create more opportunities around renewable and energy independence. However big or small it is for you, for each of you, there's something that is a little bit in the way right now, but you can tell it's crumbling. And I think you know that there's opportunity on the other side of it. And there's just like this hold right now, but it's, it's close. It's coming. Um, okay. So meantime, what can you guys do? I mean, obviously continue to stoke the fire of this plan, um, get things assimilated, congealed behind the scenes, be ready, be prepared. But also, is there any advice on like, just currently like right now, how you can sort of feel what you need to feel. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. It's saying the same thing. The one thing that I would add is like right now, if there is some offering to you of some sort of like financial support you may need, an investment you may need, um, a loan you might need, uh, there's opportunity for this, whether it's family supporting you for some reason or investors, whatever it is, there's potential to receive, you know, so tr try to feel receptive right now because that's supporting um, this, this bigger role that's about to come. Um, but people are seeing like why uh, that some financial um, could be windfalls for some of you, or it could just be like a little bit of support for others. Why that is available is people are feeling this new vision you have and they can sense as well that the tides are turning, that the, the phases are changing and that something big and different is coming in and that you're a part of this. And so they really want to support it. So um, try to drop into a little bit of receptivity and accept any um, financial support coming in so long as it feels good in your body and your gut. Um, okay, so let's just pick um, maybe one little message. Go with the flow, aquamarine. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna leave you with. Um, you know your mission. You, I can feel the passion in you guys. Just be patient. Do the work you need to do behind the scenes. Um, allow yourself to dream, think big, have big plans, feel passionate. Um, but until the opening, the, the, the new threshold for you is here, just go with the flow. Allow... Um, yourself to be receptive, allow people to give to you a little, allow even going with the flow of like big inspirations that come through if they feel too big and like overwhelming, continue to go with the flow. Where's your flow trying to take you? Don't block it and don't push it, you know? Like, oh, this huge idea, I'm like, I'm gonna go after it, but you just, you know, are getting like pushing too hard or something, like this is saying, uh, things will happen in right timing. Trust that. Uh, don't push. Don't block. Just see where the, the tides are pushing because the, the right timing is on its way for you guys. All right. That is where I'm going to leave you. If you um, resonated with this, let me know in the comments. Would love to hear the shout outs about what you guys are doing. Um, or a little thumbs up is always nice to see as well. And I guess this is a goodbye and I'll see you in another reading. See you guys. Hello, pile two. Welcome to this career reading. 
Um, you guys picked the pyrite and um, some initial kind of messages coming in before we even dive into the cards are I kind of feel like you guys are the old souls of the groups um, and a little bit like you may be the ones a little bit more interested in things like energy work and healing and I mean really you could be anything and career could line up to any all sorts of things but like there needs to be a meaning to it for you and um, I think you have a lot of deep wisdom whatever age you are a lot of deep wisdom locked within you you've seen in many other lifetimes all the changes all the revolutions all the abuses all the beauty all the horrible things you've kind of seen it felt it all and so you're a little bit less affected um mentally but energetically you feel things really really deeply and so like your purpose is just to kind of raise the vibration bring meaning to things bring some healing to things um, some compassion to things that's just what i'm feeling but let's dive into the cards and see what we uh, find here <laughs> okay to start out we're going to look at um, what it is you can bring value into your life around um, so like what do you value what do you love so how can you incorporate that in what you do hence potentially bringing in like a greater income um, yeah and we'll get a little bit more context about what's happening as I um, go around with all the different things we're doing okay wildness electricity I love it <laughs> Okay, let's get all the cards out, um, and then we'll kind of see how they, uh, the concoction made. Communication. So 33 is a master number, uh, adding up to six. So expressiveness, bringing in um, harmony and beauty and fate. Um, and then there's a 36 here, so 33 adding to 6, and then 36 adding to 9. We're having sort of compound, um, interesting, 3, 6, 9. Um, anyway, yeah, you have that energetic. I definitely feel like that electricity that this card shows that matches that, um, sensitive to vibration feeling I kind of was getting I know I didn't say that specifically that but it was in my mind like <laughs> sensitive to vibrations you guys are um, you have electricity in your veins and there's something that you really value and love about um, um, receiving that and pushing it out that is really it um, it's striking and I think you do this through communication um, for the process uh, <laughs> for the purpose of sort of evolution and um, like lightning even past electricity lightning it, it if you were to be capture lightning in a bottle or be struck by lightning that feels like a faded thing so there's something about how you value what you love that's able to catch lightning in a bottle. So I really do think like you, um, you really value vibration and you know how to channel it well and you know how to express it really well to harmonize the world, to awaken people to certain moments that are fateful. Um, you know how to recognize fateful moments and there's something you really value and um, love about that so for me this is a feeling of like really tuning into vibration and using um, expression in a way to harmonize and awaken um, certain fates um, 
usher in fate, <laughs> um, illuminate fate. Yeah, it's, it's very, uh, you know how to harness wildness. It's amazing. Um, this is really cool. It's hard to ex express how this um, is something tangibly to value because it is just energetic um, rather than physical, you know, but I think uh, definitely a value of using words to really electrify people into their fate, um, to electrify things into fate, um, but definitely expressiveness and words that feel electric and it's just an awakener force and something about that because you value it can bring value to you. Okay, I think I just went in circles three times saying the same thing. <laughs> but Okay, so now we're going to look at um, sort of what would be similar to a sixth house in an astrology chart that relates to how you feel a sense of purpose. And that's coming in because it sort of holds where you maybe have a... Um, like a honed skill, as well as an ability to systemize, organize, make efficient, hence be very productive. So it's a useful energy, a purposeful energy, but also sort of like um, related to how you pr produce in the world. South, so in the Celtic world that I study, this is related to fire energy and summer energy, which we already see this electricity is kind of fiery. So there's definitely passion in you guys. Um, okay, let's get the other cards though. Adventure, passion, just like a deep expressiveness. Music, yeah, I mean, right? So both of these cards have a two in it. So something about, yeah, knowing how to balance, harmonize. And then the expression again with three, play. Yeah, you guys are just also just like really creative. Um, you're passionate, you're creative. That's a thread that's connecting here. So um, in that, value area, something more vibrational, communicational, and then in your the way you produce and organize, there's something a little bit more playful that happens. You really know how to, um, yeah, how to, how to create systems and productions and efficiency and be useful and skillful around um, just joyful creation. You know, there's a real skill here for, you know, a creative skill, whether it's literally music or just composing things. It could be composing words. It could be composing um, workout routines. It could be composing um, whatever uh, piece of art. Um, but there's, yeah, there's just something uh, where you, you know how to bring um, a, a, a playfulness around composition that's exciting, that's adventurous. You may um, be useful and effective and skillful at doing like um, adventurous workshops, bringing people together to learn things, but also enjoy themselves. Um, but just this feeling of really wanting to feel useful and skillful around um, elevating people's moods, um, bringing more joy and passion and um, creative expression into things and um, being a little bit daring in it. I definitely feel a daring thing here. You are, you're wild and daring and um, you feel like the, yeah, the adventure crew for sure. Um, Okay, so now let's look at um, what in an astrology chart would be similar to a 10th house, so like where you're able to build some mastery, excellence, authority, and longevity. Um, this is kind of like where people come to you for um, advice and leadership type of thing. Something established about you. <laughs> 
magic alchemy beautiful look at this electricity again all of this fire energy like you really know you do i picked up on that you know how to feel vibrations um you have a strong third eye which relates to light energy light workers light energy vibrational energy you know how to um, compose with it be magical with it surrender beautiful um, this is to me an out with the old and with the new energy because nine and one so nine is an ending and then you move into one which is a beginning so endings and beginnings you know how to cross thresholds how to help people cross thresholds but then they add up to a 10 which is sort of also like um, a threshold itself uh, with that zero behind the one that's kind of um, if you're thinking about like tarot the 10 is the actual end but it's to me nine is the end and 10 is the threshold and one is the new foot in um, so you're an absolute threshold uh, you have some kind of authority and mastery around understanding thresholds and how to use light and third eye and magic and bending things to um, to bring completions and beginnings that are uh, exciting and fortuitous. Yeah, okay. Um, and then the revolutionary. Yeah, you're... Um, you are brave, you're exciting, you're passionate, you're fiery, you give no Fs about the old ways. Um, you're here to usher in new thresholds and you have mastery around it. Um, but there is this very creative energy threaded through everything, this magic, the one and the nine and the 10, when you add them up, um, what are these numbers? Four and three to seven. That is um, an alchemist on its own. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I think um, you are a very, very free spirit. Um, and I just do think that you need to work in the arts or else in just expressiveness and play. Um, it could be more energy work healing um but there's just something where you you see past the constructs you see past um the facade the surface of things to the magic underneath things the unseen you see into the unseen it's a thread that's coming through here with all this light fiery energy um, but whatever you do i think bringing some um, expressive or artistic or healing um, energy um, with a, a purpose of, of joyfulness in moving on, in um, joyfulness in awakening things and shocking people into <laughs> like here what you value is like shocking things into being um, or awakenings and here is like using expression and creativity to um, elevate the vibration and the mood and the creativity and here you're just um, the magic of the threshold and going with the flow and just um, giving no Fs about stepping into doing things your way and not caring what anyone says or push back pushes back on like you're you're the leader of the, in the new you are the first to always step over the threshold um, but I don't think you know these other areas really support that so you're kind of a pioneer and you have so much ener like energetic, excitement whether you're an energetic person your your vibration has um, an energetic excitement about it that just inspires you know you're an inspirer you're an influencer you're a creative um, pulse um, but also this deep healing energy i think coming through as well so 
Um, okay. Super beautiful. You're definitely, I mean, just trying to think of some threads here that connect that are more like <laughs> tangible. Um, yeah, I mean, artistic writer, an artist, a body worker, someone doing something with body, um, and someone that just helps people kind of uh, bring in new cycles of their life. It's like a, a midwife of, of changing seasons for people <laughs> and the world. Um, how do you help people? You know, like this could even be uh, counselor energy, um, but doing it through art, through expression, through writing, like you can really, by channeling people's creative energy, you can help them kind of, um, step into new phases of life to, uh, surrender, um, yeah, what's old and embrace what's new and, um, yeah, this ab ability to really, um, awaken people to through expressiveness to um potential you know that's i think there's a lot of things that could fit in that role um but that's the thread that kind of ties them all together to me okay i'm gonna pick some archetype cards from the wild unknown to get um just some other thoughts how to kind of bring some of this together archetypes that might show up when these are all kind of in place and um, supporting you supporting each other you know they should all support each other to really put us in our greatest path of career and effectiveness in the world um, both for personal gain for usefulness and for um, worldly you know our duty okay the vessel yeah there's definitely a body thing going on here I think you use your body and uh, either use your body or know how to use spaces as containers or little literal containers um, this came up in a reading not too long ago but there's yeah something about understanding vessels bodies as vessels spaces as vessels containers as vessels um, you know how to work with with the vessel to bring in healing to bring in energy to bring in um an awakening around it the self yeah again this is sort of like this could go several ways like either being an influencer and a star and a creative um magnetic person or someone who knows how to help tune someone's own body and self um, working on body energy, the energy of self, or helping people individuate themselves, um, going on individuation journeys. Um, but like, yeah, being able to just like really feel aligned either in yourself as an expressive vessel of your own or helping others to do this for themselves or both. Um, okay, we'll do out the box the box and the vessel um this is interesting the box to me because that is sort of constructs and i feel like you break constructs um so the way i want to read this is like you um you see the boxes you see the constructs and you know exactly how to work within them and without them in order to help people to see the boxes they're in to bring awareness of your for yourself around boxes you're playing in and the right timing or the right methods or the right ways to help yourself break out of any boxes to shine bigger and brighter or to help other people see what boxes they're in and how to feel if this is sort of like in the center of the box this glowing thing this feels like the person in here to help people see the boxes they're in and if it's capable of containing their light or if their light is too big to be contained here and channeling a sense of playfulness and magic and energies to either fill up the box um, 
to the capacity they can to, to take up the, their space in the, the constructs they're playing in, to be witnessed and seen and respected in the constructs they're within, or how to um, shine out past the box and break out of it. And because there's this threshold thing, I feel like usually it's helping someone see how they're playing and working within a construct and then helping little by little to see, help people or yourself see how to kind of um, shine past it or using art to show the boxes society is playing in or some culture or some element of life is playing in and how to kind of awaken to um, flipping that box on its head and showing the absurdity of it or um, showing how we can expand past this way of thinking or this construct or system that we're working in through a playfulness, through a joyfulness, because it's like you understand that honey uh, versus vinegar is the attractor, you know? <laughs> so you have an ability to really challenge the system and bring in new ways without people even knowing that they're breaking old ways <laughs> um, because you bring such an aliveness and such a an creativity and expressiveness and a joy to it so it's really beautiful um, definite old soul energy this is not stuff that most people are capable of but i think that you come off as younger souls maybe because of your creative playful wildness but that is like when you think of like sometimes how the the archetype of the elder is portrayed in some shows um they are just the ones that give no f's and are just kind of funny sometimes they're the grumps but a lot of times um you know they are the ones that are just like you know been there done that i'm just gonna have fun now and if that breaks your rules i really don't care <laughs> i just need to have fun and express myself and I see how this is well for me and well for others. So I'm just going to do it, you know? Okay. So a little bit more about where this might be coming from. <laughs> oh my gosh. Aquarius and Uranus. Uranus rules Aquarius. You are, you shake things up. You are filled with electricity and vibration. Um, you are live wires. You are... Um, flipping things on their head, you are originals, you give no Fs about expressing who you are in the oddity that it is, and it's, uh, it just attracts people to liberate from, from their old vessels and their old boxes into shining who they truly are without them realizing they're doing it. Um, and you, because you can do this for yourself so easily, I think this is something you can really help others do. And I feel like this revolutionary card is more about helping individuals revolutionize their life because you just know how to revolutionize things um, through, through honey versus vinegar. Um, and you're a master of that threshold. And then this fourth, uh, the four for the fourth house here, it's like um, something about soulfulness, like being really connected to um, support systems. You understand the importance of, like, it's sort of like, you know, I feel like this is same, like you understand the importance of boxes and constructs. You're not against them. You're just always gonna question if we can go beyond them but you get that constructs do create foundations, they do create security and support. So you're not here just to cr crush constructs just because there's a purpose for you that things need to feel stable and soulful and beautiful and really come from a soulful place that is, that is a protective vessel, that is going to create a safe box for people. So you create safety within your revolutionary <laughs> quality. Oh, you guys are, I love it. I love it so much. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten a little bit out of this um, to help you direct or feel into how you might want to tweak what you're doing in the world or um, tap into your potential a little bit better or see an area where you're kind of missing like maybe you're struggling to pull money in and you really need to tap into this communication 
um, you know, this sort of awakening type of electric communication. Um, maybe you're like chaotic and struggle to produce things or feel skillful. And so it's like, you know, get into composition and play and adventure somehow. Um, you know, whatever it is, if you're feeling something missing with your whole look to one of the parts, but then also feel, especially with these archetypes, how um, archetypes, how some of this can all kind of congeal into, um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, exciting things. Okay. All right, we're going to look at some tarot real quick just to get a snapshot of like maybe where you're at right now, hence um, some ideas of, of uh, good practices for the moment of what you can be doing. Um, okay. for you guys. All right, we'll make that work. Um, let's push these over. Yeah, there, there is something I want to say here. I think for the most part, you're in a better position than you think right now, but I'll, I'm just going to illuminate why that is, why you might be feeling a bit scattered and unsure but you're 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 coming in, oh wow you're coming into a beautiful spot okay yeah at the moment I think you are coming into a new sense of understanding of your heart and how to keep it um like an endless generator around um, coming at life and at career through your heart. I feel like you are starting to plug into this, but it's new energy. And I think um, you're still, I think you know what you want to do. This nine of pentacles is showing there's a new sense of wholeness, a new sense of rhythm that you're putting in place around this career aspect that you're really feeling your greatest sense of wholeness and value around your wholeness. So like the potential of abundance is there because you're so connected and coming from your heart and really being responsible about integrating something about this into your everyday and understanding what kind of rhythms you need to implement. And I think you're already into implementing or at least know what you need to implement, but I think you've come through a huge phase of um, massive like neurogenesis that's gone on. So it's like um, you've been introduced maybe to a lot of new information, a lot of new learning, a lot of um, potential things to do and sort of like connecting to a, you know like a like a bee in the spring is going to like flip from flower to flower connecting its pollens but it's like very um even though it's fun and um and sweet and flowery it's um non-committal scattered like when you drop it into the human realm if a human were to just sort of flit around and like touch this and touch that and like not really commit to anything um but just seeing how you know what it's like trying on clothes, like what things feel like. I think you've been through this phase and it's created a lot of new neurogenesis and a new neural pathways in your mind. But I think you have um, come to this point of like finally being able to decide which flower you want to live on. But you're, you're at this transition, you're in your own threshold moment right now of like um, these two together is like, I think you finally have the vision, the new vision of what you want to do, what you want to commit to, 
and now you need to start um, honing in on on um, the correct neural pathways and allowing some of the others to die off and sometimes that's a little hard to do some pruning of neural pathways um, so it's sort of like a little bit of sense of loss of all the potentials um, but there is a new hope there's a new focus there's a new dream and you're in the process of moving towards that and these are showing that um, you know what to do with it but you're still moving towards it um, so just give yourself time this is going to take time to shift um, but just trust yourself you know what you want you know what you need to do um, it's time to kind of let go of so many potentials so many ideas so many shallow connections shallow opportunities because what's coming is massive career energy two of pentacles and queen of pentacles both have capricorn energy associated with them and you're really claiming your status you're really going to come into your own whatever your um this is around like knowing the value of what you want your wholeness to be and leading through this impressive generative heart energy um you're really going to climb to the top of something um, with a big vision and it's going to be very fruitful and it's going to create this ability to really nurture life around you, to create legacy, to um, share in, in your, your bounty and be a provider, be a supporter. Um, because you're really claiming your authority here, your mastery of something, um, and you're on your way to it. You know what it is, and you're going to enter it and immediately shoot to the top. It's going to be like a weird thing. Like this woman, to me, it's like she enters on the base floor of this new committed direction that she feels so passionate about, but because her heart, just like that self card in that last part of the reading, there was like all the rays coming out through this like heart center because you're just so lit up and so connected to that heart center and so aligned to whatever this tower is. Normally people would have to start on the first floor and work their way up, but you're going to go in, you're going to get on the elevator and instead of stopping at the first, second or third floor, you're going straight to the top and you're becoming like the leader of this. So I'm going to say faith, trust um it's coming maybe yours is three stories high but it's still the top maybe it is 50 stories high but whatever it is whatever building you're entering you're going to go to the top of it so for some of you it could be a small building which is beautiful like whatever you want you want whatever you your heart is telling you you want that's great but for some of you, it really is like <laughs> queen of the world <laughs> type of energy and like really, you know, you're going to hold some, you know, just saying though, like this is going to come with um, as high as your building is, it's going to come with that much um, to juggle and that much pressure and focus and responsibility as well. And so just know you're inviting that in. You're ready for it, though. You wouldn't be shot to the top. You wouldn't be given queen status unless you were ready for it. So really cool. Just a little bit of patience. So let's get a couple cards. You know, what can you do in the meantime? Um, so I do feel like you're in a threshold moment. So like, what can you do within this threshold to kind of ease some anxiety you might be feeling? Um, Seven, and just trust in your investment. You've invested in this. Page of Cups again. It's a creative thing, which we already saw. Like you're very creative. Something poetic, something creative, some messaging. You know, you do have that communication card. Seven of Cups. Um, in the meantime, in this threshold, don't. You need to still come from your heart, but also your gut. Um, not everything that shines is gold. Some of it's pyrite. <laughs> so don't try take everything or everyone at their word right now, especially because this wand is pointing directly at that tower you're entering. I don't think you've, 
you know the kind of building you want to enter. You haven't entered it yet, and I think that there's some options for you. And you need to be careful about which one you walk into because not all of them are gold. But I think this is saying, like, you know, you know this already because you're, it's coming for you. But I think it's just a confirmation for something that you're already capable of and aware of, of like, uh, make sure this feels right to your heart and right to your gut. And I think you're going to have multiple, look at all these different stars and she knows, like, trust your gut. You know the one, the offer, the building to walk into because it will feel like it's come straight out of your electrical energy. So even though there might be one star that's brighter, a couple that are equal and a couple lower, uh, you know the, the one that's just right. So trust that instinct, even if there's one that seems to be more impressive, but it just doesn't feel right, you know, trust that. But I think offers are coming or openings are coming or the identification of which building thing you're walking into is is swiftly on its way so the main thing is the patience with the seven of pentacles you have invested in this just keep nurturing whatever it is keep being plugged into your heart plugged into really loving your sense of self and your rhythm and your purpose um yeah because it's right here so let's get one just sort of oracle card advice connected to this as well. Ooh, well, you got to um, <laughs> get crystal clear. Yep. Um, that I think is what I was basically just saying. And then it says, get up, get moving. Yeah. So move towards, even if you don't know, you know, there's all these buildings here, even if you don't know, it's like, you know, the cluster, you know, the neighborhood of the building but maybe you don't know exactly which building, but you need to get up and explore them. You need to look into them. You need to ask questions about them and um, get some ideas and start getting those hunches, you know, and that's leading towards you feeling crystal clear um, with these two stones coming through. So do a little research, do a little wandering, do a little bit of... Um, tapping into your gut instinct and you know but still let your heart lead you and trust in the investments you've made so beautiful you guys this is where i'm going to leave you um definitely if this resonated with you a thumbs up is always appreciated and i definitely love comments to see all the different ways this connects with people or not <laughs> so um anyway i will see you guys in another reading Hello, Pile 3. Welcome to your career reading. We're just going to kind of look at different things that can really bring fulfillment in career and help you kind of calibrate and hone in on what those might be and maybe where you're missing some marks um, and how to kind of like, yeah, bring those all together and um, find just like a... a, a a beautiful sense of direction around what you want to do in the world or if you're already doing what you want to do how to refine it and make it more magically you okay so before we get into um, the cards of your pile like some initial messages coming through um, I think that you guys are kind of the the backbone of society you're um, you're like the adults who, um, although you welcome ideas about change and um, ideas about shaking things up, um, you're cautious and you're precise and you're moderate. And so you want things proven. You want to see the business plan. You want to see the detailed, thought out, um, practical application and... Um, yeah, so you really hold society up. You you guys have a lot of very responsible energy. And so even though you may not be the ones um, bringing in the fresh wave and the excitement or being the um, elderly rebels, um, 
you really are kind of our, our foundations. That's sort of what I'm feeling from this pile. So each of the piles to me, there was either like the younger souls, the older souls or the adult souls. And you guys to me are the adult souls. Um, so, um, yeah, maybe not as, um, <laughs> as exciting or as, um, rebellious as the other two groups, um, the youngers being the exciting and the elders being kind of the, uh, giving no Fs and just wanting to kind of like heal and raise the vibration. Like you guys are very precise and responsible and, um, and the, the current leaders really. Um, okay. So we're going to look at, um, a few different areas so like what you really value hence where you might bring income in we're going to look at that first and then we'll look at a few other areas and kind of see some common threads that move through all of them so how you can kind of merge them what is a commonality that really feels like um, you can use to integrate different things you need alchemists that doesn't surprise me um, it's very uh, wise energy that needs to know, understand different properties and how to combine them and kind of a sciencey uh, wisdom, new beginnings. Well, okay, you might have a little bit of a uh, revolutionary spark in you. We'll see. I feel like everyone on some level right now does. So, uh, no matter. And speaking your word, voice. Okay, beautiful. So, um, things you value, hence what you can bring some value in on, is like you, you have a very wise voice. And when you use it, you're not just talking just to talk. You've done your due diligence. You've experimented. You've observed. You've researched. This is like, to me, like the scientific process. Like you've seen the data, you've talked to people involved in what you're going to talk about, you've involved yourself somehow, and you've um, seen the different diagrams and seen the concoctions and seen how things work, and you're able to use your voice to illuminate kind of like new research coming in, but that's been very vetted and very tested and very... Um, it's already very stable, you know, but you can use your voice to, to show the new research, the new um, stable things that can create new paths, new ways forward, um, new types of business models, new types of compounds, new types of medicines, I don't know, whatever it is that um, you're able to use your voice to usher in, but you, you're not bringing new beginnings just to have a new beginning, just to have freshness. Like you're, you're bringing new beginnings in through your voice. Oh my goodness. One second. Orby. Okay. Sorry. We're a disaster here. My dog is trying to get into a package. Of course. So. <laughs> okay. Um, to me, this is saying also, like, I love taking these little, like, disruptions as, like, you can also use your voice as a disruptor if you want, <laughs> but also don't let other people disrupt you. Um, yeah, so really cool energy. I love this stability and this thoroughness and the responsibility you're bringing to the potential new things. You know, I feel like the young people might have the new ideas and be passionate about it, but you know how to like be thorough about it and be like, okay, well, uh, that's a cool idea. Let's test it, you know, not just burn things down and um, see what happens. <laughs> like, let's, let's test this out. Um, okay, this card wanted to fall out, but I haven't talked about yet. So the next thing we're looking at is um, what you're able to, where you have a skill, where you're able to systemize, um, make efficient, hence really produce something and feel a sense of usefulness. So we've got building and atoms. 
And that makes so much sense to me here. Like I do think you guys have a very precise um, scientific mind and if not scientific, just like really understanding the importance of building on every level from the micro to the macro from starting with like really um, like solid uh, materials and um, knowing knowing processes that are um, are advanced you know in terms of how you build how you systemize how you organize like um, just like yeah very advanced type of building quality spiritual partnership um, Yeah, and the 40 here, like really strong foundations. You you know how to be useful and skillful around creating really strong foundations to things. And then the spiritual partnerships, um, you, you see in creating systems in, in whatever it is you produce, you're able to um, use, and this again to me like ties into this scientific type of method, even if you're not a scientist, you have methods where you're able to um, test things and through data get the reflection back of what it actually means and investigate further and improve upon. Um, so you're using um, information in a very spiritual way to under to understand mirroring reflection what's being reflected back about things in order to build better um, oh, let's we still have one more card to pull <laughs> just going off here um, surrender okay that's really beautiful um, it's a very spiritual energy here um, you have a, an incredibly advanced way, an advanced skill, an advanced way of systemizing. Like I do think a lot of you understand science, some science in some in-depth way. And you're able to see into the mystery of that science and um, to be surprised by it and to push it and... Um, and but it's like really advanced things you're doing. So you're just kind of like you have this ability to um, trust. Um, what am I trying to say here, you guys? <laughs> to trust a little bit of, um, of spiritual energy into like, I feel like people may not totally understand your process. And even though it's thorough and researched and scientific, you have hunches because you're experienced that you allow yourself to have. So you don't have to explain every iota of how things work because down to atoms, we can't always see and explain how those are working and building foundations when it comes to um, things we're not, that aren't, specifically scientific or about atoms. Um, but there's something, um, you allow communication in from something bigger and you only have access to it because you understand things on such a deep level and such um, a mature and advanced level. And it's only through, through that capability that you get certain wisdoms that come through and um, and you do you will surrender to those when they come through and sort of trust your hunches but they're not based on nothing even though you might not be able to show exactly every inch of why this process works the way it does you it's it does because you allow something else in beyond just the data um, okay let's look at um, so career, the 10th house-ish type of energy you would see in an astrology chart, 
is career but the way i'm you know would break that down is like what can you build mastery in authority mastery in authority in and longevity in sort of um uh the wise um the wise seer soul type of energy of like what which doesn't always, you know, make the money or produce things, but like, what is it that people come to you for, for advice? Where do you, where do you hold a certain respect and command because you've built in a way that's given you a solid excellence, you know? Change, wind, yeah, okay, this is interesting. Very interesting energy for you guys. Unexpected. You really uh, specialized souls. Patience. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Transmute. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. You. You can tell when the winds are changing, but you have that, again, that grounding, that uh, maturity to wait and get more information. Like you, you can sense there's a change in the wind. You know how to predict trends, but you're not going to do that impulsively. You're going to have a little bit of restraint and patience and see how that might affect all of the things that um, it will affect in your sphere of whatever you do. And then you're able to, it's not necessarily just like going with the flow, going with the wind of change. Because you've been patient and you've analyzed this change coming and this potential trend coming, you've been able to see how to capture that wind and direct it to work for you in whatever your position is, whatever your excellence and mastery is. So like an example of like as an, a scientist, you see um, people changing from studying I don't know what I'm talking about, so don't judge me, but like from, from studying dark matter to shifting more into quantum mechanics, I don't know if those have anything to do with each other, but you get what I'm saying, like you can sort of see a shift in interest, and um, but you observe and you watch it, and so you're able to take that shift in whatever thing you're researching you're able to infuse it just enough with like the new tide um, where it gives a little bit of a new life to what you're researching, but without completely abandoning ship. And um, it keeps whatever you're doing totally relevant without um, destroying it, if that makes any sense. So maybe you're... Um, a let's think what's another example maybe you are um a yoga teacher and all of a sudden acro yoga everyone's decided that's what they're doing they're not doing regular yoga and instead of just like jumping ship because you love your whatever yoga practice you've been doing and you love teaching in that style instead of just like completely abandoning like maybe you bring some acro stuff into the studio and you incorporate, you know, 10 minutes of class to that or something, you know, where it's not like you're uprooting what you're doing, but you're just kind of um, infusing what you do to keep it modern, to keep it fresh, but to not um, just uh, abandon your mastery, you know, and maybe with time that acro thing just was a phase and then you haven't completely destroyed your foundation or maybe it takes off but you're in a position to expand that because you've already um, surrounded yourself with a little bit of it familiarized yourself with it and your clients with it you know so it's that sort of you know like on a, a 
a less scientific level, that's another example what I've, I'm seeing here um, is just sort of like um, using the, the wind, the change in, in a way that is moderate, right? That infuses a newness, but doesn't um, have you just jumping on all the new different bandwagons every time there's a new bandwagon you're just you're you're keeping up but you're doing it in your way and keeping yourself relevant in your own way if that makes sense but you you're someone who knows you're very up to date on the trends and you're very good at incorporating them and responsible about it so it's really cool so um there, there is this like higher thing going on, even though you're very sort of a um, thorough, uh, advanced individual. There is this element of magic infused in everything you do. You do allow downloads. You do allow some sort of higher source. You do allow alchemy and concoctions to... Um, be somewhat, even though they're scientific, be somewhat magical. You do allow a little bit of magic in, into the things you do. Um, there is a spirituality around you in your own practical way. Um, I don't know if that <laughs> helps you own anything specifically. Um, but I do think you're a builder. I feel like you're a business owner or you would be a great business owner because you know how to, like I said with this thing, um, you know how to keep updated without um, constantly jumping ship or just jumping fully into any new trend. Like, um, yeah, just... Um, you're good leaders. You just need to either have a business or be a leader in a business or lead in some capacity. Have your own yoga studio or at least um, cult, you know, like whatever you do, you need to, um, you build thoroughly, you build with such mastery and excellence that people really can't compare. Um, Whatever you do, I think you just do with excellence and you slowly but surely show yourself to always end up in a leadership position because of just such wisdom and patience and um, insight. Yeah, okay. So let's get a few archetype cards in the center to help us draw in like some archetypes that might appear or that you could channel that um, are really using this whole supportive triangle that um, of you know value productivity and mastery um, into each other to really create a beautiful the tier you know how to um, to get the um, you know how to use vulnerability and intimacy to empower. Um, yeah, you. this is definitely indicating to me that you have a certain amount of power and you know how to um, get intimate with it, hence um, bring out the vulnerabilities and the potential power others have. Um, but you have, you're really good at creating intimacy um, that, that helps bring really powerful concoctions, powerful partnerships, powerful transformations, um, powerful resources, whatever that, that is, um, the underworld. Yeah, again, like you can see, you see below the surface of things, you see where the potentials are, where the resources are, how to precisely channel things to um, have stability and have power. Um, and it's this mysterious process you have, this mysterious quality you have to know how to see how things channel, to see how things 
move, hence how to be precise with that and methodical with it and masterful with it. And then the riddle, and you can take these, these cards have so much in common too. Like you, you can take any puzzle. Um, it's like the wind, the wind, you know, wind is um, such a crazy thing um, that can stir up a lot of confusion and movement and change. And you're able to come into things like that where you're building on a cellular level where you're um, alchemizing things and transmuting things. You can see below the surface, hence you can puzzle out any riddle because you're so precise and you'll hone in on just the right thread to follow. And you'll be really focused, really precise. And when you get through that riddle, that thread that you've followed, you know exactly what to do with it to build on to use foundation of the underworld, of the hidden depths of something to make it powerful. Like you have sight, you have a lot of vision. Yeah, definitely the backbone people for sure. <laughs> okay, let's get a little bit more here. First house, Cancer, Neptune. Yeah, um, that new beginnings thing, that one first house is highlighting that new beginnings aspect. Like you do know how to keep up to date on trends. You know how to spot the new things coming through. You know how to spot the fresh energy, but you're not gonna take that fresh energy as an impulse. You're going to um, look to the depth, the underworld of it, to what's secure about it, what's foundational about it, how to make it um safe how to make it um how to make any of these new things you're so good at keeping a pulse on um uh how to make them resourceful and safe um and brings how they bring stability how you're able to create with the new beginnings to the new trends, the new beginnings to build something um, really solid and really stable and you're patient with it. Um, and then the Neptune coming in here is that, ma that that spiritual quality where you get, there's something about you you can't quite explain um, with the data and the analysis and your processes that's just like um, these down you do because you have such um, depth of wisdom and like I really do feel like most of you have some sort of scientific knowledge even if it's more esoteric um, or more formal traditional whatever it is like there's a deep um, understanding of, of uh, scientific composition that um, that you also know how to just like fluidly um like with this where i was saying like you know how to infuse things without completely changing them like yeah you um but definitely really cool you're definitely on the pulse of any changes you know how to keep things fresh and modern how to keep them up to date how to make them stable and solid and how to infuse them with just like a really deep wisdom and um, a spiritual essence that's like hard to um, articulate, which is why I can't articulate it. <laughs> um, but it's just like, it just feels like whatever you do, whatever you touch, something very wise and magical has touched it. So really cool. Um, definite backbone people of our society. Okay, let's look at a few, um, tarot cards to kind of see where you're at right now, hence maybe what information might be useful to have in terms of where your career is and where it might be heading. Um, but yeah, just to kind of leave you with that thought, like I do think that you're, you're great business builders, great, great business leaders, um, backbones of society, great teachers, great... Um, wisdom keepers, great scientists. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh. 
This one wants to come out. Yeah, King of Pentacles for sure. Five of Pentacles, interesting, okay. Look at this King energy. Let's get one more. Okay. Um, I feel like this is kind of a where you are versus where you're going or what's coming. Um, I think you know your value right now. I think you are potentially even being paid well currently. Um, but at the same time, um, your values are changing currently in the process. So, so the success you're feeling, the monetary value you're getting, there's some, a little bit of dissatisfaction even though you're in a stable spot. And it's because your values are shifting right now. And so this is saying like, you just need to stay plugged into your intuition and it will kind of guide you because you're not the type of people that make rash, bold, quick moves. Um, but just know like any dissatisfaction you're feeling is because you're, there's something um, shifting in your values. You're becoming a little bit more spiritually minded um, or at least currently thinking about things that are um, a little less materially focused, thinking about soul, thinking about um, future generations, thinking about um, something beyond just your personal gain at the moment. Um, and there's just questions you're exploring, you're opening your mind, you're having maybe some spiritual experiences and your intuition is being open to you. And that's a really beautiful thing to have happen, but it is um, making you feel certain ways, certain dissatisfactions with your current place and career. Um, and it's just a process you're going through. I don't think it's forever, but um, it probably will lead to you wanting to make some subtle shifts. Um, you know, like I don't think you are a person who makes huge shifts easily, um, but there is something shifting in you and it will lead to some shifts. You're, you're, you're coming into, you're staying a king. You are the king energy, this ability to um, to manage, to, um, provide, to, um, I don't know, like all, all the CEO type of qualities, <laughs> um, hold responsibility, hold the pressure of, of things on your shoulders. And you're shifting from being a king that's very materially focused to one that's coming into a little bit more of a heart center um, that's wanting to do things that connect a little bit more to your soul and to um, uh, to other people's hearts as well and not just your heart. And I think there's new potentially either coming in or has already entered. It's hard for me to say if this transition is already kind of like underneath of this starting to take place or if it's about to come in and it might be different for each of you. So you're either starting to feel this, like starting a little side thing or feeling these stirrings or it's like really on the precipice of coming in. Um, but you're really trying to switch into connecting more to your heart in career and a new creative thing is coming up. Um, new communication, new energy, new movement around a creative, passionate thing that's connected more to your heart. And you're definitely 
either currently or coming up like very concerned though still some king of pentacles here of like how to make this stable how to make this something that can um is probably one of those riddles you're going into right now from those archetypes we saw of like okay this heart-centered thing doesn't have the financial potential to help support what you know my life and the lives coming into this so you're really investigating at the moment i love this little magnifying glass you're investigating how to make this financially stable how to make this something that can hold um, materially what you're dreaming up what this new um, creative spark is about um, and the one thing I'm going to say about this is the four of pentacles can be a warning to um, to being over concerned with stability to the point where it's static <laughs> so just um, you know stay try to stay in touch with your heart and try to be a little bit more trusting about um, that there just by your touching this there's going to be stability and so don't fixate on it of course do your due diligence do think you know of course it's responsible behavior to make sure that there's some solid foundations going on but if you get fixated in it you're going to undermine this with some staleness and brittleness or um, just uh, a lack of creative flow right um Okay, let's get, I just want a little bit more information real quick on, on that Four of Pentacles, what you need to do with it, if it is something that's pretty okay, or if it's kind of tripping you up. It, yeah, it's tripping you up for sure. Um, mm, yeah, th this is why you're so concerned. Okay, this is beautiful though. Um this is this concern about this new spark this new potential idea you are so concerned about the um finances of it the stability of it because it's a fully new path and i don't think you make changes like i said like you don't change things dramatically and easily but this might be a huge departure for you and so there's a little bit this this over concern with the financial aspect and how to make this transition is paralyzing you from truly allowing this new opportunity to take off this because it is such a new path and i think you just need to be patient with yourself and i think you need to trust yourself more um, it's a bigger leap than you're used to making and um, you know not everything succeeds that's just life and um, what I can say is what I see coming with it is a new threshold is a new deep feeling of alignment um, with an impulse in you that's been missing so even if it fails you're being connected to something you really need I think for a lot of you this will succeed but I, I think it's too early to say, um, especially because there's a lot of people here. And I think for some, it, whatever this is will succeed. And for some, it, it may not. The point is not that, though, for what I'm seeing. The point is that it is sending you on a new trajectory that's much more aligned to you. So if whatever it is you're concerned with doesn't come through, you're still going to be on a new path where you're connected to your fire and something new will come along that's maybe a little bit more stable but more connected to this heart energy so that's what i want to leave you with with that um okay and then we're just going to do one oracle card with just like some gem wisdom oh this one kind of came out find peace within and that's what this two of wands to me feels like is like whatever happens with this new spark this new pro i feel like it's a new project whether that's only within you or if you've already started it um whatever happens with it these new thresholds the fool the two of wands they do tend to come with some failures i'm not gonna lie it's like the baby learning to walk you're on a fully new path um 
but you need on that new path to stay with that impulse the baby you know the baby needs to learn how to walk they have an impulse to walk and if they stopped after they fell once or five times or a hundred times they'd never learn to walk you know but like stay with that impulse because you're learning how to um connect to your career in a much more heartfelt and creative way so awesome if whatever this is takes off and you create those beautiful foundations you're very very concerned with and a little bit paralyzed by fabulous if it doesn't work out in the end you're still on this brand new fresh beautiful impulsive um, energetic exciting path and something else is going to come along um, so either way, like it's still going to be exciting. Um, you just need to kind of trust and let go a little bit and let let things breathe and let things flow and let things grow instead of like, um, yeah. So it's like find peace within, find peace with the fact that you're maybe on a new path, but that that path is awakening you to something much more beautiful, even if it comes, whatever it comes with, successes and failures, probably some of both. Um, but with time, it will, because of who you are and the energy we've already seen, it will turn eventually into very much so huge successes. It just might not be your initial things that happen. Could be, we'll see, you know, different for everyone. But I'm just saying for those of you um, where whatever this initial thing is, if it doesn't work, something's right behind it and right behind that and right behind that. For some of you, the first step you're in, um, but it doesn't matter. The whole point is that you're reawakening or totally newly awakening to um, leading through heart and um, being connected to um, creative impulse. And um, I think that's something that is really great for you guys. Um, I think it's good. So, so try to find the peace within and just um, trust that whatever happens it's leading you to just like a much more beautiful path for your uh for who you are so okay that's where i'm going to leave you guys um really loved this reading for you and i think you're quite magical quite wise people that are very needed in this world so thank you for what you do thank you for coming to this reading um I always very much so appreciate a little thumbs up and definitely if you have something to say, um, comments are always exciting to see how such different people connect to, you know, same readings and in these collective things. So, all right, I'll see you guys in another reading.